Hello YouTube, I thought I'd crack straight on with part two. Okay, continuing what we were talking about with Larry Wood earlier. The long story about this I will try and keep short is, I have this version, uh, got an orange one as well upstairs, but what I did have, it's still got upstairs, but it's in a shocking state, is my original one of these. Now it goes back to the fact that I had an M6A McLaren, lost that as a child. I've kept the black, black painted one, that was this in a shocking state that I, I managed to wrestle off a kid that my brother knew and he used to mal maltreat his cars. We won't go into that because it still angers me now when I think about it, how disrespectful, you know, it was. So, yeah, this is, you can see the markings on it. This is actually the oldest Hot Wheels I own um, in terms of its condition being as good. You know, they're, they're not got a better condition Hot Wheels this um, this old, you know. <laughs> if I do have one, it's a bit... You can see even the fact that... Look at that. See? Even even Hot Wheels still let you have a bit of springiness in your wheels. Anyhow, so there you go. That's Hot Wheels Stingray. They have done a... They've done versions. I think they did a, a dark red and they did a black one in 2016. This casting is still being used today crazy to think isn't it but again that's one of uh, one of Larry's little gems this personally is my favorite other than the bone shaker I really do love the VW bug beetle whatever you guys want to call it he's 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 just nailed it he's absolutely superb so certainly when you consider the age of the thing and the fact that even on the uh, checkmate series you had a um a metal base with this it was, a, it was a great little find you get that in a twin mill with a, all metal and thinking wow that is still harks back to the days of them being old classics unfortunately our friend here this is the only example i've got of the um <laughs> the roofless one unfortunately this isn't just roofless but it's shieldless screenless clearly you can see it's based on the same car they just cut it um it will get a bit of a, a spruce up because to be honest with you I'm gonna uh, gonna take those wheels out as well this will get a complete it doesn't need that look at that oh, graffiti naff Ugh, all over it so anyway but that is my only uh, that's my only um, oh, fridge that's my only um, cabriolet version of the Beetle unfortunately looking a bit sorry for itself the C6 Corvette again a race team which is one of my reasons I was quite pleased to get hold of this. I don't exactly know who Martin Ariola is, but I'm guessing he's probably somebody who works for the company, or he's a racing driver or something like that. I haven't got a clue myself, but then that's fair enough, isn't it? You know, I can't know everything. But C6 Corvette, I've got a gorgeous red one that's like that red upstairs with the things unfortunately they always seem to get the black beaming bit wrong on the car so this was a bit, but this just randomly popped up and i thought good god it's another larry so corvettes and beetles we've got together there we are going to move across because i'm going to save my favorite to last other than of course i mentioned the beetle outside of that i've got a particular favorite of mine that i didn't even know was made by larry we'll get to it later this uh, this, is, this is a more premium, a slightly more premium version, hence the Thailand on the bottom, because this other one is a Malaysia. I'll show you that in a minute. This came as part of a set, a set of six uh, Batmobiles, what have you. But I was a bit disappointed; it only had the, the basic clear windshield, windscreen, on the top. Obviously, a Lincoln Futura that was modified by George Barris. Am I right in thinking? Or George Barris, Barris. Anyway, that's the story behind it. And I'm so pleased that Larry was the guy that had made this machine. There's a mark on there. Oh, no, that's a trademark thing. I thought there was a little mark on the bottom of his wing. It's a, tr it's a TM. Yeah, beast of a car. A little bit more detail could have been added here and there on that one. But, you know, we're fair enough. Got to appreciate the, 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 the job. So, and... In, in terms of knowing that this was one of Larry's, I had some spare wheels and I gave it, 
I made it look a bit more, what I would like to suggest is it looks a bit more of the bollocks, really. Certainly compared to the mainline version, which just had boring five spokes, I thought, no, let's bling it up a bit. So Batman's looking a bit more meaner, and proper rubbers as well. As you can see, the, I should have probably shortened the axles a little bit. There's a bit too much play there. Batman can sort of, oopsie uh, daisy, but there's a bit of, uh, a bit of slack. But happy with that. Very happy with the outcome of that. Looking across to more of his US cars, which I'll get back to. Uh, we're going away from that US cars, actually. I'm going to stick to, I'm going to go with a few more things here. I forgot to mention our friend the Beetle here. This again is on old wheels. Is it, yeah, bit bit sorry for itself, bit wonky, but then Nick didn't really mind the fact that if a guy had wonky wheels, she'd still, she'd still take it. The fact she was happy, the fact that this was a purple job. Did love her purple uh, purple car. She's got a whole box of them upstairs that she left behind, bless her. And this was another one of those. Which again, the, wheel, the wheel's wonky on it. A bit wonky wheel here as well, actually. Our, uh, our charger. But, uh, that's the custom charger, am I right in thinking? Doesn't even say on the bottom. Pretty sure it's the custom Dodge, Dodge charger. Um, going across to more... Oh, where was I going? Ah, oh, no, hang on a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang time. Okay, yes. Right, we'll go back to American cars in a minute, okay? Because I'm getting a mixture of the two. This... Now, I used to have a Corgi version of this, which is a little bit bigger, and it had a Rattler along the bottom. I didn't realise that Larry had designed this gem. Now, if you ever hear a real one of these monsters, the 917K, by the way, this is not the LH. The LH has a longer body, okay? And the LH, the KH, this actually should say KH, but they just call it the K. It's it's a German translation from LH is long. It's It's... It's not long, it means long tail in German, LH, rather than saying LT. Why they would, you know, why would they, why would they use English if, if it's a German vehicle? Let's, let's just use the logic there. I'm lucky to have two of these, and one of these will get, dare I say, chucked in a bath, stripped, sprayed, and it will say Golf 20, Golf number 20 on the side. I'm going to make this Steve McQueen's. And if you can just make it out, the steering wheel is on that side. I think this was designed deliberately because it was designed at Le Mans. The drivers could get out on it this side because they were going to come in this side. They weren't going to put it on that side because the car doesn't come in backwards. So, you know, people often ask, why has a German car got the right hooker? Ah, well, yes, that's why. I assume. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So sticking with German and Porsches. He made this. Now this is as heavy as hell again. It keeps changing which ways around they are. I'll show you the base. 959. I'm going to show you a, 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 its rival shortly. No detail inside. You can't see through very much. You can actually. Uh, you can actually. You can see the seats. But it's the, the, gra the grass is so smoked. You can't really make a great deal out. But I detailed it front and back uh -huh. as you can see will it will it focus uh, no it doesn't want to focus it's just going to make me waste time here while it doesn't decide to focus damn thing yeah there we go there we are 959 the 959's rival and I'm admit I've got a bit of a chipped very uh, dubious looking but again it flips up at the back, so you can see inside is the Ferrari F40. Now, in my opinion, unfortunately, Larry got this car great, the dimensions and everything, except the width. The width is all over the shop to make it a track car. Unfortunately, the F40 is a lot wider than that, uh, but it looks nice in red. I'm lucky to have found a flip open in yellow. So uh, I can't really complain at that. He did make a nice job of 
one of these two I'm about to show you. Unfortunately, this is beautiful until somebody pointed out to me, somebody recently pointed me out the wheel sizes and the wheel sizes are all over to, to cock. It's like they did with the 288 GTO and you're like, oh no, damn. Because otherwise this car, it really is just sublime. And if I can try and get the, uh, will it, will it, will it, will it? E yes, there you go. Oh no, it's struggling the whole time. I've detailed the back a little bit. A few little details on the front. The Lamborghini Cantash. What is it? The P? Is it the P four hundred? Am I right in thinking? LP five hundred. Yeah. And actually, I think because it's again a nice metal base, slightly nicer than the Matchbox version. The Matchbox version looks a too elongated. Now again. Where Larry got it wrong, and obviously had to be for track purposes, this is one of the few he got absolutely nailed. Now, admittedly, you have wheel size issues front and back, fair enough, but the shape of this is just spot on. It really is. If you see a picture of a real XJ220 Jaguar, you will notice, there you go, so you know it is, and you can see the codes and all the other stuff, you will notice just how much more pointed parts of it are, okay? And there's a company called Maisto made a giant version, which sets out to be about that long, okay? Lovely glass flips, oh, lovely doors and everything. The mirrors are slightly off, oh, the fronty bit opens. The thing looks squashed as a pancake, whereas Larry, bang, nailed. Dimensions are perfect, and it really is. It's one of those cars that unfortunately we like the 959 got usurped by the F40 here, the, um, at the front. Unfortunately, this got blasted out of the water by the McLaren F1, and then the GTR even more so. So unfortunately, Jaguar made an absolute minter of a car, and then it got swept under the carpet completely as quickly as it came along, it disappeared again. So there we are, that's leading across to them. If we're going to go to my America with the Kings from switching continents here, we're going to go with, you saw this earlier, me mentioning the fact the wheels all wobbly on that, on a Nix. But Dodge Charger, they did a black version for the Fast and Furious. Casting's a little bit, it's not too bad. We then go across to Ford's. Now I'll push these fellas back just quickly so we don't keep having focus issues, which I've noticed was part of the problem going on. Get the Corvette in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> this was one I managed to keep off, keep away from Nick. I was quite lucky. And uh, I know it's sort of got a look of grease about it. Ooh, what's that mess on the back of there from? Yeah. Ooh. I didn't even know that was on there. I do apologise. What on earth is that from? Right, it's gone. <laughs> there we are. Anyway, where were we? It's just a piece of paper, I think, stuck to it. Ugh. 40, is it a 1940 Ford? Yeah, it's a 1940 Ford. Fabulous. Absolutely. And I don't think I'd want it in any other colour. I mean, it might look great in red. Might have your silver, blues, what have you, but I kind of looked at the oh, this is a, it's an absolute peach. So um, that's one of those cars. I think if I'm ever going to get a diorama port sorted out for myself one one year, then this will be one of those that's, that's parked right outside the door of the uh, of the diner. That's a guaranteed uh, 1940 Ford Coupe, right. except it isn't it's four seats. And another one of his. Got those hideous wheels. I do have better examples. This is just the better, the easiest one I can get my hands on. You'll recognise this one currently being used in uh, the cinema series, movies at the movies. What do you want to call it? It's a jag. It's a it's a Jaguar. It's a Mustang that uh, uh, Sean Connery steps into, and this woman drives in Thunderball. It's picked up somewhere in. Uh, 
and wherever it is in the Caribbean. Uh, gorgeous car. Uh, originally came with a lovely flip bonnet and the last examples of it were in the Mustang 50. I, I'm lucky to own both sets of the Mustang 50, one of which has the flippy top and one that has the sealed version like this. But as an actual shape and as an actual casting, it's a lovely, lovely car. Um, I'll forgive those horrible aero wheels. One day I'll probably strip them off that and put some better looking things on there. So we're going to get down to my last four. Okay. Now, I've got about half a dozen of these. Or is it four of them? I did have half a dozen of them. I, think, I, I did think I'd had half a dozen. I've got four of them. There's a black one. I've got a yellow one with purple flames. And I've got a... It was a black one. Anyway, uh, a grey one. Grey one with orange flames. But this looks probably about the nicest and neatest of the ones I have. And it is lovely. It's 55 Chevy, as you may or may, or may not all know already. It got recast, I think, about 14 years ago. I think they said this is because this, this is the 2006 casting. Yeah, there you go. 2006 Mattel. But he designed, Larry designed the original 55. And he also did, and this is why I've got hold of this one deliberately. Believe me, when you see it, look at that. All right, it's moving a little bit, paint a little bit missing off there. But again, well, look at that, it's another grease job. I, uh, I've polished that, and unfortunately it didn't really last that well. But what I have done is touched up the chrome paint on there, left the bottom because they get worn down. But uh, I dabbed a bit of chrome here and there on this beast. It was really, really fortunate I happened to find this on a car boot sale. And the guy was, so oh, it's amongst the mate, go on and have it, you know, 50p. 50p, 50p, the thing is like, blimey. It weighs more than that. That's light, that's light as a feather compared, that, that's a gem. So that's going in, that's, I've got a, I've got a triple pack series, to two triple packs full, and that one sits in one of them with a purple. However, I've come to my last two cars and I couldn't really decide which one of the two would be my number one. So it's going to be very, very difficult for me to choose them. I'm just going to have to put the pair of them out. Okay. And uh, here we go. Those two. Obviously, these are a factor. <laughs> the fact that they open. Oh, hello. What have we got going on here? Does that not sit straight? Ooh, 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 I do believe. Aha. I do believe I've got a bit of a problem. I think we've got a problem. Yeah. I oh, know. It does work all right. Yeah. The 67 is something that came along a little bit later on. I have always loved AC Cobras. I've always, always, since the moment I first saw one on a television film i think it was the gumball rally driven by michael sarazin kind of wow and then years later on i discovered the actual background to the car the cobra has been a long-standing part of my life and i love it well you see what i've done detailed this particular one i've got the last count uh seven different cobras i think and I'm always looking, I've got my most recent one, which I'll show you in a minute. The car is just, oh God, well, what, you know. If you haven't seen stuff about the Cobra already, if you're new to collecting cars, you'll realise why the Cobra is so damn special. Go out there and learn a little bit about it. It is phenomenal. And what's more, I deliberately chose a metal base version it doesn't even tell you that it's a Cobra. That's the best bit about it. You need to know your stuff. And uh, I have yet to find what I would call a unicorn, my, my holy grail, which is a metallic blue special edition of this. I keep looking for it online and it costs a fortune. So kind of resigned to the idea that I will eventually get a, Mac, a, a naffed up one just make me own i think that's probably the answer to that um yeah i own one matchbox one which i found without a windshield windscreen 
bit and uh, got rid of somebody got rid of I kind of thought okay fine so I've I've kind of renovated that but it's not perfect this I've discovered <laughs> I, I I've grown to love this car recently I think in the last four years the the Camaro I found a I found an example where the boot had, uh, the the top piece had got snapped off and I colored in the engine uh, a friend of mine was very very sneaky he went he went on our market and or the nearby market and he found an old version the red that you'll have seen recently there you go that's it clever it's a good job this is going to get stripped eventually he found this but he found the original one that looked like that with the um the flippy bonnet jammy git this is the much later more how should I could say sanitized and well sanctum it's the it's it's the sacrilegious as I would call it oh nice thank you um yeah this is the sacrilegious version of the the Camaro which you will now find at least it still had a metal top they've ruined it now I've noticed more recently started getting away with trying to make a metal base and a plastic top version of this car and it's truly well, luckily People aren't really picking up on this just yet. They aren't going for it in such huge quantities. Whereas the Cobra, it's disappearing all the time. So, um, yeah, I'm still picking up these before they all vanish. Again, metal base as opposed to plastic base. This more recent Cobra I got the other day. The boot's a little, the front piece is a little bit, the, the uh, bonnet is a little bit loose. But again, it's pretty much intact. Metal base, Malaysia. And yeah, whereas that one isn't a metal base, it isn't a Malaysia job. Oh, it is Malaysia. With a different casting number on there. But yeah, fabulous. So that more or less concludes. We built from, we built up from the bone shaker through to this. A kind of a reflection on just what I consider to be my favourite Larry Wood cars. If you go out there and you buy a car, a Hot Wheels car, and you look at it and go, hmm, I wonder, do a bit of research on it, and you'll be amazed it's very likely to have come from the pen. Whoops. Uh, you'll find it's probably likely to have come from the pen of Larry Wood from his drawing board somewhere along the line. And he seems to have done, as I said, over 400 different castings over the years. A particular favourite of mine I would have loved to have got hold of with the classic cord, the 810, 812 open topper. Um, again, that is extremely rare now, unfortunately for me, to realistically think about trying to get hold of one. Uh, there is uh, also the Mercedes C111 I remember seeing and thinking, God, I would love to get hold of that car. Because it is just from an era that I can remember first being into cars from the early 70s when I started collecting. My mum used to collect them for me when I was three, or grab them for me when I was three. She probably didn't realise she was causing causing me to be become an obsessive almost. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the walkthrough with some of these. Um, I may do a follow-up on another Larry Wood if I discover any more of his designs, but you've basically seen the a large propensity, a large proportion of what I do love that he's made over the time. And uh, it's it's an, it's an interesting little walkthrough to find and discover, good God, he made that. Oh, did he do this? Oh my God, he did that as well. And even the more weird and wacky stuff is uh, is, is forgivable, you know, like turbo and charges. Yeah, right. I'm going to wind this up because it's 24 minutes plus. I hope you all... Take care of yourselves. I'll uh, do another video sometime when I'm in the I'm in a binge mode for doing it. And I'm now gonna make myself a cup of tea. As you can hear. Take care for now. Bye. <laughs>